Good morning. Ever since Jay Gatsby proclaimed himself, self-proclaimed himself an Oxford man, we've had a fascination with elite institutions as a stamp for achieving the American dream. There is a mythology to these institutions that they are a pathway to leadership and fortune. When I tell people of all the things I've done that I happen to go to Yale, I get asked, is there really such a thing as skull and bones? What do they teach you there? What is the secret? The reality, though, as we all know, is higher education is extraordinarily expensive. On average, $27,000 a year for a college education. Many private universities, the costs are even more exorbitant. And class size is limited. Getting into one of these institutions is really like winning a global lottery. And parents, many here in Livermore, start preparing folks from junior high to get into higher education. Now, in a global economy where knowledge and creative thinking are going to be the keys to the jobs of the future, as we've, been, as we've been hearing, the question of our time, in my judgment, is how can we democratize access to higher education? MOOCs are one answer, not a panacea, but one answer to that problem. For those of you, many of you know, MOOCs are massive, open, online courses. And the idea is pretty revolutionary. Now, if you want to get a higher education and want to listen to the best lectures around the world, you can go online and almost design your own curriculum. You can hear Gary Becker, professor of economics, Nobel laureate, give a lecture at University of Chicago uh, and take that class. Or you could hear Chuck House on doing something on innovation and take his class. You could take a class at MIT on engineering and get access to the best minds uh, in, in engineering. In fact, one professor at University of Pennsylvania, Al Fries, actually taught poetry online. His class had over 100,000 comments posted in poetry. And Al Fries said he'd been teaching the class on Homer's Odyssey for almost 20 years. And the one time he taught it online, he got comments that he had never thought of his entire career as an academic. He got comments from around the world. He understood that people in China or India may look at poetry slightly differently than people who just happen to be uh, Penn undergrads. And so he called this online experience, actually, something that was a community of learners. Not only was it allowing him to share complex interpretation of poetry with people who wouldn't have access to go to some, a place like University of Pennsylvania, it was actually making him more thoughtful and creative about his understanding of poetry. Now this said, we shouldn't think that MOOCs are going to replace the traditional university, at least in my judgment. And while I thought the previous TED Talk was brilliant, I do believe that teachers are irreplaceable. Computers and online learning can't replace a teacher or a lecturer. When I think back to my own college education, the people who made the most profound impact on me weren't just the lecturers. There were folks who spent hours writing handwritten comments on how no one would read my paper other than my mother and I had to really learn how to write better. How do you replace that online? Or someone who spent two hours with me saying, you know what, it doesn't matter that you may be of a different name, a different religion, you could actually make it in politics. How do you replace that online? You can't. And so the point is that we should be cognizant of the limits of MOOCs. And yet, let's look at what they can do. Here are a few concrete things that I think MOOCs can do. One, they can reduce the cost of higher education. The reality is there are a lot of basic courses that you can take online. And if we don't use that to displace higher education, but to supplement it, we may be able to reduce the cost because people can get some basic credentialing online. Second. With our community colleges, as all of you have heard, some folks are there five, six years because they can't get access to basic courses that they need to graduate. But we can use MOOCs to at least help fulfill the need for providing access to courses that people need 
for graduation. Third, the skills gap. As all of you are probably aware, there are so many jobs in advanced programming, in robotics, in 3D printing that people w that, w that, that exist, but we don't have people who have the skills for them. Well, imagine a cla place where you can go online, take a class on 3D printing or how to operate CNC machines, not incur a tremendous amount of debt, and figure out what the skills are going to be to actually get these type of jobs. It's actually a place not just for young people and students, but also for people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s who want to go and get retrained for certain skills, but don't have the wherewithal to spend thousands of dollars in getting online credits. And the final part is that it gives a glimpse in to people who never would have a chance to step foot onto a college campus uh, or, or many of these elite universities, at least they get a chance to have some exposure to the best and brightest minds in the world. So what can all of us do? First, as employers, we shouldn't just look down on online education. Now I get there have been a lot of things that online courses that haven't done well because they're for profit and they have, ha haven't always had the best ideals. But the point is the problem isn't with the technology, the problem was with the content. And there are MOOCs now with Coursera and Udacity that are actually providing people with access to the best content in the world. We should look carefully for people who have those credentials to say, let's give them a fair shot and see if, those, if they have the skills and not discriminate against someone who may have an online credential. Second, we should encourage people at a young age uh, to take MOOCs online. Why? Because when I was growing up in high school, you know, you get to, you think, oh, you know everything, or you're, you're one of the, uh, you're exposed to two, three hundred people. And then you go to college or other places, and you say, you know, it's, there's a huge world out there. There's a lot I don't know. The final thought I leave you with this is this. I thought Jade gave a great presentation this morning about the importance of creativity and innovation and how that's going to lead the 21st century. But look at our history, our global history. For most of, the, of human history, genius or access to these elite education has been the domain of 1% of individuals, 1%. The promise of democracy is not just that every individual gets to vote and participate. The radical idea behind democracy was that extraordinary ideas, extraordinary genius can come from ordinary men and women. Frankly, that's in some sense the idea of TED. You don't just have Nobel laureates, you have people who have ordinary experiences but can do extraordinary things. And the question then is, how can we give people more access to those extraordinary experiences? MOOCs are one answer. Again. They're not the whole solution, but they're one answer to fulfill that ultimate ideal, the enlightened mind ideal of the spread of knowledge and giving more people in the world the privilege of access to higher education so that they can make a meaningful contribution in this century. Thank you.